Good morning, everyone. We'll, we'll make a start, and don't worry if anybody comes in late. Okay. So today is a, is a general introduction to the, to the MSc in Sustainable Architectural Studies, and also an introduction to the, to the modules. So that's how we will progress this morning. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah? G generally, in this, in this school, sometimes the acoustics are not very good. So what I would just say to you is if you're ever in a lecture, a presentation, and you can't hear, just say, I can't hear you. Okay, it's really important. Um, and, then, and then the staff have to either speak louder or get a microphone. Okay. I mean, th this room's okay, but some of our other rooms, it's sometimes quite difficult to hear. Okay. So we'll, we've, we've got most of the morning. We'll have a short break at 11 o'clock so everybody can wake up and then we'll come back. And then at 12.30, you have a, a library skills induction session and that's in room 1603, just over there. Okay, so we'll be finished by then. Um, today's session, I am, I am recording. So I'm recording the screen and I'm recording my voice. Okay, so um, the, I'll make this available. So there's an opportunity if you want to watch this session again, you can watch it again as, as a video or we call it a screencast when we're, we're capturing the screen. Okay, and generally most of the sessions that I run will be recorded like this. It also means if for whatever reason you have to miss a session, it doesn't matter, okay? You, you have an opportunity to watch it again later, okay? Also, I, I will make all of the slides available, so don't feel like you need to sit and sort of copy, copy items from the slides or, um, you know, make lots of notes. I will make it all available afterwards, okay? And generally, that's the, that's the procedure in, in all of my sessions and all of my lectures, okay? So, welcome. We had, a, we had a welcome session already, but welcome again, and welcome to the MSc in Sustainable Architectural Studies. Introductions. I'm Aidan Hoggard. I am the Program Director for the MSc in Sustainable Architectural Studies. So I am the person with an overview of the whole course. Um, I'm the person you should come to if you have any particular problems, um, you know, any, any issues, any, any misunderstandings, see me. Um, if you have particular problems about a specific module, then see the module leader. But if it's a more general query or general problem, I'm the person to see. Um, those are my details. Uh, generally, what I would prefer is if you can, if you want to see me, is to drop me an email uh, and I'll make an appointment. If, I mean, by all means, knock, knock on my door if it's urgent, but often you'll find that I'm not there or I'm busy. So generally much better if you can drop me an email, explain what the issue is, and I'll, I'll get back to you with an invitation for an appointment. Okay? Right. We are, we are going to be joined later in this session by Professor Fionn Stevenson. She's got an appointment she couldn't cancel, but she will be joining us at about quarter past eleven or so. Okay. Um, feel free to stop me and ask questions. Okay, just, just put your hand up. I, I, won't be, I won't be offended if you interrupt me. Okay, just say, Aidan, I didn't understand. Call me Aiden, okay? You don't need you don't need to call me, uh, you know, anything else. A Aiden is fine. And if it's okay with you, that's all right. Because I was in the 16th floor. Ah, don't worry, don't worry. Have a seat. You haven't missed you haven't missed much. Um, what I was just explaining is I'm I'm recording this session anyway. So, so the video will be available soon afterwards and you can rewatch it. 
All right. Um, yeah, generally in the school we 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 do use people's first names, and that's even you know even with the professors we tend to say Fion. Um, by all means, you can use Professor Stevenson, and, and I sometimes do, but. No, generally, no, no member of staff will be offended if you use their first name. Okay, and equally, we, you know, if it's okay with you, we prefer to use your first names or you know or your preferred name. We we don't generally call people Mister and you know Professor. Okay, we we like to keep it quite quite friendly. All right. So we've got quite a lot to cover today. Um, what I'm going to cover is. Some, some brief introductions to a few very important university systems. Now, I'm sure you will have more information on this, but I just want to do a brief overview of a few important things. So the first one is Muse. Can I just ask, has anybody logged into Muse yet? Not yet? Yes. You have? Yes. Yeah? yeah? So I'll just log in. So you go to the, go to the university website, log into Muse, it, I mean, my, my password is, is saved, but, um, so, so you've seen this, you've been in through this system, great, okay. So that's, that's really important because that then takes you in to some very important university services. So if I just click on my services there, we have the suite of Google services which are very very powerful Google Mail, Google Calendar, Google Drive um, we use Google Mail for all of our email we use Google Calendars extens extensively and I will be sending you invitations through Google Calendars so often if I'm arrang arranging an appointment to see you individually I won't send you an email you will just get an email generated by Google that will say Aidan Hoggard has invited you to a meeting. You then just click accept or reject, and I know if you're coming or not. Okay. Google Drive is a fantastic resource. This is online storage. You, as a student, you get 30 gigabytes, I think, which is which is quite a lot of storage. You can then access Google Drive on any any mobile device, on any computer in the world. You can also install the Google Drive um, app for your, for your computer, which then allows you, if I just show you on here, then allows you to access your, your Google Drive documents in a normal kind of file browser. So if you can just see, there's my Google Drive folder there. So I can access all my documents like that. Um, the, the other powerful thing about this is, as soon as I save a document to Google Drive, it, Google then syncs it with their computers. My, I have another computer at home, it then syncs with my computer at home. So if today, if this computer caught fire, it doesn't matter. I haven't lost anything. I can go to any computer, any iPad, even my phone, access all my documents. Okay. So it's the best way to store your information on Google Drive. Okay, let's just go back back into here. Um, so I'll just go back to my presentation. So we've got introduction to Muse. Introduction to online services. We've had a a brief look at that. Introduction to Mole. So let's have a look at Mole. So Mole, which stands for My Online Learning Environment, is the university's, um, University of Sheffield's um, learning portal. So it's where we put all the important information about your courses. <clears throat> and every module that you are taking We'll have a. It's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. This, um, I've, I've recorded this session anyway, so anything that you've missed, you can watch again later. Okay. 
Um, yes, yeah, so on Mole, all of your modules will have a Mole site, and that's where we put in important information. That's where we will put uh, lecture recordings, slides, handouts. It's also the place where you will make most of your submissions. And when we do a lot of our submissions are digital, so they're just submitted online. They're not they're not paper submissions very often. So I'm just going to just going to briefly I'll just go into Mole and we'll have a look. So when you open Mole, you'll get here a a course list. Okay, and. My course list has a lot in it. You won't have quite so much in your course list, okay? Um, but it will look. I'll just zoom in a bit here. Actually, it will look. It will look fairly similar to this. Okay. So we'll have a list of all the modules that you're enrolled on. And if you go into any any module, let me just find one. Um, I'll look at one from last year. So when you go into that, into that module, there'll be further information available. So this, this is one of my modules, and if I just go up here, I'll, I'll view it as a student. Okay, because at the moment I'm viewing it as a member of staff, and it looks slightly different. Okay, so we're viewing it. This is how it would look to you as a student. And it's quite simple, really. Here we've got lecture resources, so let's have a look in there. And for, for, for all of my modules, all of your lectures will have a folder, and there'll be resources in that. Other members of staff use it slightly differently, but, but the same principle. So if we go into daylighting and solar design, there's some, some more files here, so we've got, um, there'll be a video, and there'll be the slides. So, so the video is, is downloading. So, so for example, in the volume. Um, it is a factor of designing. So, so here's one of one of my uh, lectures, which was recorded. There is voice. There's voice here, but I've got my. So there's all sorts of information. If you if you've missed a lecture, this is where you can go back and and view that lecture later. Okay. You also find under Mole, when you have a submission, there will be a place for submission. So this, this icon here, which looks like a sort of open book, is telling you that that's, that's where you need to submit your assignment. There's a little bit of information about what you need to do. And if you click on that, it will take you through to an upload portal, and this is where you would simply upload your PDF normally. Um, you, can, you can put a few notes on if you want. You, you submit it, and you've submitted your assignment. And, it, and it's as, as easy as that. And Mole will record when you've submitted, so it's, you know, it's very easy. It also allows you to resubmit it. So if, say, you submitted it and then you, re you noticed I don't know, a spelling mistake, you can go back in, submit it again. Okay. So it's it's a really useful, yeah, really useful site. And generally, that's sort of this is the place where you go, you go looking for information for your modules. Okay. Any any questions so far on on mole? Okay. Yeah. I think the thing to do is. Um, just, just go in and have a look. I mean, at the moment, you probably will you'll go into your modules on Mole. There probably will not be a lot of information in those modules because what what most module coordinators do is they they populate Mole as you go. 
So we don't put all the lectures on there at the beginning. We wait until we've had the lecture, then we put the information on. But we don't want to overload you with 20 lectures to look at. Okay. Moving on then to module handbooks. Every module has, has a handbook. And that handbook explains everything you need to know about the module. Now, we'll just use this example. So, when you go to your module site on Mole, you will find the module handbook. So, so here's the um, here's a one from last year, module handbook. So let's let's open that. Oops, I crashed. Okay, give me give me two minutes. Just to, um, while I'm here, just to show you Google Drive through, through the web portal. This, this is what Google Drive looks like if you just view it through your internet browser. Um, and, and it looks slightly different on a tablet, slightly different on a phone, but, it, but it's the same information. Okay. Let me just open up a, a module handbook to show you one. <coughs> Okay, so here's, a, here's an example module handbook. This is, this is for one of my modules. So, so what you get is on the, on the cover, you, get the, um, you obviously get the title of the module. Um, autumn semester or spring semester. Each module has a module code. And then moving in, there's some information about who to contact. So who is the who is the module coordinator, which in this case is me. Um, you get information about how to contact that person. Some members of staff will put specific instructions about, for example, they may say, uh, I'm available on a Wednesday afternoon. Some of them, like myself, just generally leave it more open. Okay. I always Ask, ask you not to, not to print these out, just, just view them as a PDF if you can, just to save on paper. If the module handbook changes, so there, there can sometimes be small timetable changes, I will update the module handbook. So better that you just rely on a digital copy than, than printing out paper. Okay. And I generally encourage you, if you can, to be, to be paper free. I mean, I don't use paper. I mean, I have I have paper, but I really don't use paper anymore. Hello, come in. Come in. It's all right. I've re I've recorded this session, so you can rewatch the bit that you've missed. Okay. So within the module handbook, you then have a contents, and it starts off the module introduction and aims. And the aims, 
summarise the, the key intentions of this module in terms of learning and teaching. It tells you how many credits the module is. Okay. If there have been any changes to the module since last year, there will there will be some information about that. The learning approach summarizes the sort of how many hours you're doing for this module and, and what that consists of. Is it lectures? Is it workshops? Is it self-directed learning? Is it field trips? So there's some information about that. And then there's a summary here about the way that that module is delivered. So in this example, it talks about that there are, there are lectures, there are workshops, and there's an assignment. So it's a brief summary of what you would expect in that module. Then we move on to the learning outcomes. So slightly different from the aims of the module, we're looking here at what are the specific outcomes that we want you to learn from taking this module. And in, in many cases, there are about six or seven learning outcomes for every module. Skills and employability. So here we're looking beyond your, your sort of academic career. We're looking into your future careers. And we're looking at what skills is this, is this module giving you that you can use in your future careers? And how might that help with employability? So, so in this module, what is, what is specifically um, going to be useful to you in terms of um, gaining employment in the future? Because that's very important to the university. The, the University of Sheffield is, um, is very interested in making sure that our students, when they leave, are very employable in, in an international context. We, we don't just want to um, you know, educate people, but then the education is, is not kind of specific to employment. We, we try and make it specific to, to employment. Course, content and timetable. Um, so this is very important. All module handbooks will have a detailed timetable of all the sessions Lectures, workshops, assignments in that module. Now, this is the definitive place for information for that module. You will also, today I'll also be giving you a, a more sort of a summary timetable of all the modules. But this is just a sort of um, framework timetable. It's not the detailed information. So on this timetable, it will just typically tell you Monday morning there will be a session, just for an overview. Whereas the timetable in the module handbook, if I just, um, yeah, if I just look on here, for example, you probably can't read that from, from the back, but that says there, it says 10 past 11 to 12 o'clock, and this says assignment briefing session, Arts Tower, 1603. So it's telling you exactly where you need to be. Okay. Now for my modules, um, all of this information is on a Google Calendar, which I will invite you to that Google Calendar as well. So if you're if you're using Google Calendars, which I really encourage you to do, it will. When you, if you're lying in bed in the morning, it will beep you and say you need to go to a lecture at 10 past 11. Okay. I think it's the best way of working, really, Di digital ca calendars. Um, that's the reason why my, my timetables look like this, because they're just extracted straight from the Google Calendar. Okay. Some members of staff do it slightly differently, and they put the information here, and then they duplicate it into the Google Calendar. But the important thing is, this is the information you should refer to in the module handbook. It will also have 
all the information about submissions. So in this example from last year, Monday the 15th of December, report submission, online submission to MOLE. So it's telling you exactly what you need to do. Okay. Moving on. Assessment methods and criteria. So here we are explaining to you how we are assessing your work. So what are the methods that we will use to assess the quality and the outcomes of your submissions? And depending on the module, there will be a, a different breakdown of how we are assessing this. So you see here is a particular breakdown. And then there will be a detailed description of the assessment process. So in this case, it's describing that there is a case study. It's telling you that this is a 20A3 uh, page report. So it's giving you all the information that you need to know about your submission. Okay. Most module handbooks also then give you an example form for feedback. So this is the kind of form that when you, when you get your, your um, assessment back, this is how it will be marked. So you, you have a breakdown of the marks, you have a final mark, and you have written feedback about your work. Okay. There's then information, this is university-wide information about plagiarism. Um, there are some very useful links here. So I really encourage you to, to have a look at these links. It's, it's library information just to, just to give you guidance on how you should be citing other people's work. Okay, I won't go into detail on that, but just have a look at that. Academic support. Again, there are lots more online links here in terms of feedback and support. So have a look at those links. Then most module handbooks will have a reading and a reference list. Um, and this will give you a range of texts or online resources that you are suggested you may want to have a look at. It does not mean that you need to read every book on that list. And some modules will have, might have 30 or 40 references, and it's up to you to look through those references and make a judgment as to which ones are important to you. Okay? I tend to keep my reference lists quite short. So, for example, for this module, sorry, um, for this module, I've got five references. Okay, so I've picked out the, the, the books which I think are the most relevant for you to read. Okay. We then have the precepts of sustainable design, and I'm, I will talk about this in a, in a separate lecture. But just briefly, this is an agreed set of principles that we use in the School of Architecture, and this is particularly important for the MSc in Sustainable Architectural Studies. Um, I'll go through that at another point, but it, it's a really useful set of principles to apply to all of your work. Okay, so that, that's a typical module handbook. Any, any questions on, on that? Okay. For uh, example, so, uh, the computational software would be available for any computer personal computers? The, um, we, the software we use for different modules, the, there's a range of um, availability. So um, software is installed in our computer labs on 18 and 19. So there's about, I think there's about 24 computers or so in each, in each lab. So 
All the software that you need for any module will be installed on the university machines. Then, um, the mo I think all of the software that we use is also freely available to you as a student. Uh, so, for example, in, in my modules, the in the first week, I explain to you all how you can download software. Um, you certainly don't need to buy any software. Um, so, for example, in, in my simulation course, we use a lot of Autodesk software. And I'll explain to you, once you've created a student account with Autodesk, you can download all of that software for free to your, to your own machine. But it's up to you, because equally, we provide computers here with the software installed. But I know most people find it convenient if they, if they have a laptop, they like to have it installed on their own laptop. So you, you have that choice, okay? But you certainly don't need to buy any software, okay? Okay. I mean, you, you'll probably have, once you've had a chance to look through some module handbooks, you may have more questions, but this is just a sort of general introduction. Okay. Okay, um, Nearport, uh, um, apologies for this error message that keeps popping up. I, need to, I think I need to do something about that. Um, okay, Nearport is a, a very useful learning and teaching tool, um, which, which I will be using this year. It's, Nearport is an interactive tool that when, when you're in a lecture, it allows you, as the, as the audience, I, I mean, I've recorded, excuse me, I, I've recorded this session, okay, so anything you've missed, you can watch again later, all right? Okay. So Neopod, it allows you, as the, as the audience in the lecture, to interact. Has anybody used Neopod before? No? Okay. It's, a, it's really good. You know, it's really fun. A lot of my lectures, you don't just get to sit there and listen, okay? You have to do some work in the lectures. It keeps you awake. It means I know that you're listening, okay? And, and it, it, it makes the learning experience better because you can't just sit passively. So it's very simple. Um, what I'd like you to do, not, not now, but, but if you could do it at some point, today or this week, if you have a, a mobile device, a, a smartphone or a tablet, download the Neopod app. If you don't, you can just access it through the Neopod website on your laptop. Um, and if you don't have a laptop or a device, don't worry about that. Um, we can just share in a lecture, okay? All it, all it means is, what I will be doing in my sessions is, it, it, at certain points in a, se in a lecture, I'll be asking you to contribute. So there may be quizzes, uh, there may be things I'm going to ask you to draw, and it just means you can, from where you're sat, with, with the Neopod app, you can answer questions, sometimes you, you can type in, and we get the results on the screen, and it just makes the session a bit more interactive. Sometimes what I'll do is, as we get towards the end of a lecture, I'll ask you a few questions about things that we talked earlier in the lecture. And it's not a test. It's just so that I can get a, an idea of, was it clear? 
Did you understand it? Was there too much information? And it helps me to go back and perhaps explain a few things. Okay. Um, we also will use it sometimes um, to draw upon your experiences because we're a very diverse group here. We're from all around the world. And I, I'm really keen to, to bring in your international experiences into sessions. So sometimes I might be talking about a climate issue in the UK and I might ask you, for example, to contribute from your experience of other climate zones. And we'll, we'll do this through an earpod. Okay? Um, but as I say, it's not a test. Anything you, anything you type in will not be assessed. Okay? We'll just use it as an interactive tool. And um, I guarantee you it does keep you awake in a lecture, okay? Because I know, I know what it's like on a you know, Friday morning, 10 o'clock, you know, you're tired, I'm talking away. It's sometimes, you know, you might just get a bit sleepy, but it won't happen because I'll be waking you up with questions, all right? So we'll, we'll use that. I think, it will be, I think it will be quite helpful. Module handbooks we've done. How we do for time? Okay. So we'll move now into core modules. Um, so, oh, what I should just explain is we tend to we tend to call the MSc in Sustainable Architectural Studies SAS. SAS. You've probably heard people saying that SAS. Okay. So that's what it means. And, and we will, going forward, we will just be calling it SAS because MSc in Sustainable Architectural Studies is a bit too long. The, the other PGT cohorts you may know are MAD, Masters of Archit Arch MA in Architectural Design, MAUD, MA in Urban Design, MACA, MA in Conservation and Regeneration, uh, MALA, M arch in landscape architecture. I thought it's Chinese, Mala. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dibi, digital design of interactive built environments. Okay. Have a look on the go on the school website and have a little refresh refresh your memory. Okay. That's what when you hear Mad, Maud, Dibi, that's what people are talking about. Okay. So from now on, we are SAS. All right, and, and I will be called the director of SAS. All right. All right. Is that okay? Um, so, okay. Within SAS, we have we have core modules, and we'll I'll we'll talk about those for a while. That will probably take us through to about eleven o'clock, and then we'll have a quick fifteen-minute break. Okay. Um, in all of my sessions, I put breaks in, 10, 15 minute breaks, because nobody can sit in a room for two hours and concentrate, okay? So I will always put breaks in, all right? And, I'll, and in the break, I'm going to go away and stop that from popping up. So, okay, these are the core modules. These are the modules that you have to take for SAS. And that is the majority of your course, to be honest. So in SAS, because it's a master's, it's 180 credits, and it runs for the full year. Okay. So it's not like some of our undergraduate um, degree courses are only 120 credits, and they run all the way through to June. But because this is a master's course, because this is a higher degree, there's more content, more, more credits, and it takes the whole year. Okay? And that's, that's one of the things that distinguishes it from a degree course, is, is a much higher level of academic study. Okay? So these are the core modules that you will be taking. And I'll go through and we'll have a, a small explanation of each of them. So we've got building environmental simulation and analysis. We have renewable energy. Sustainable Design Project 1, Sustainable Design Project 2, Principles of Building Physics, sorry, 
for sustainable design and the sustainable thesis project, which may be written or designed. I will give you a brief introduction to those modules today, but you will get a lot more information once you've enrolled, once you've started those modules. Okay. So going through them, building environmental simulation and analysis. Um, uh, this is my module, I run this module. And in this module, we introduce you to the principles and skills of digital simulation and analysis of built environments. This uh, module is delivered in autumn, uh, autumn semester, and it starts in week two. So, so this one starts in about two weeks' time. Okay, and you'll all be taking it, and I will be delivering it. The um, the course is delivered through a series of lectures and workshops. Um, all of the sessions are recorded, which is very important for software because I'm sure, as you know, when you're learning software skills, you can watch somebody giving a demonstration that looks easy, and then you go home to try it and you've forgotten how, how to get to that point. So the way I run this is everything is recorded, we, we run through some skills in a session, you go home and practice, and what you probably will be doing is you'll be trying it, you may have to go back into the video, rewind, how did you do that, why is mine not working, rewind, watch again, and then we follow it up with workshop sessions where you can bring questions or problems. Okay? Yeah. This one on the top? Yeah. This is 3D Studio Max Design. This is Vasari. This is, we, we, the software is always changing, so we'll be using a range of software, um, but we'll introduce you to some good software. The emphasis in the module is making it useful to you as well. I'll show some example work later of how students were, were integrating the software skills into their design studios. Okay. Renewable energy is, a, is another core module and this is delivered in spring semester. So this doesn't start until um, uh, February, okay, next year. And um, yes, in this module, where we are looking at renewable energy on a global scale, hugely important. Um, we're looking at the principles, we're looking at the theory, and we're looking at the applications. Principles of building physics for sustainable design is another module which I deliver, and this one again begins in week two, in two weeks' time. And we are equipping you with the, the, the principles and the skills of the, of the building physics that underlie sustainable design. It's not, it's not too scientific, this course. So we're trying more to give you the sort of understanding, the principles to make judgments in your design work. But we also give you some of the underlying science behind that. So that's, that's the physics side. But it's not a sort of, it's not complex calculations throughout. Okay. Sustainable Design Project One and Sustainable Design Project Two. Hi, Steve. Steve, do you want me to? Do you want to cover your module now? And then you don't need to stick around. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Ivan Sheffield. We're from Sheffield. You're from Sheffield. Yeah, you didn't come far enough. <laughs> I picked on the wrong person. What made you choose Sheffield? That's quite. Uh, yeah, well done. Very good. Where are you from? China. What made you choose Sheffield? Steve, <laughs> come, come here. Stop. Stop. What made you choose Sheffield? Great place. Isn't it? Happy faces. Let me, let me introduce. Professor Steve Photius. Steve is Steve is coordinating your thesis project. So this is the biggest component, 60 credits. 
Would you like to say anything, Steve? I've got well, there's only 18 people. Well, a few, yeah, we've got a few not here yet. <laughs> Um, the thing you'll be doing with me, but mostly not with me, but mostly on your own, is design the thesis project. An the important word there, I think, is the word thesis, which is a project where you will go away mostly on your own, but with a bit of guided help, and investigate something that is interesting to you, and maybe interesting to other people as well and useful, but something unique and new and original. And you'll go away and you'll think, hmm, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. Then you'll think, how will I show it's a really good question? Have you ever, you know, have done exams in the past? Yeah. They've done exams, examinations. A thesis is like an exam, but you get to cheat a bit, because you get to write the question as well. But what you have to do is prove that it's a really good question. Once you prove it's a good question, then you can go away and try and answer it, and then write it up nicely in a thesis. And the best thing about the thesis is it looks really good on your bookshelf when you finish it. <laughs> My black book with gold lettering with your name on it is really good on the bookshelf, so it's worth it really well. Uh, and, uh, although it might look good, you might see fun with bookshelf. I think that generally is better to work. But I've arranged, if you've downloaded the module guidebook, which I've put on them um, no. everywhere it's supposed to be, you'll see that in week two, which is next week, Two weeks' time. Two weeks' time. Uh, there's a session for about two hours. It won't take two hours, it's probably half an hour, where I'll tell you how you might start thinking about preparing for your thesis. You don't have to do anything yet, it doesn't really start until semester two. But a bit of preparation now, you only can start thinking about it and thinking, what's a good question, and who do I want to help me with this question? Then you can start thinking about that, with that your project would be. Um, you don't have to worry about it now in a big way, but we'll see you soon. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Okay, so you've met Professor Steve Fotius. I wasn't expecting him to pop in, but um, there you are. Okay, let's keep going for another five or six minutes. Um, so, the two design projects. Now, these modules are quite distinct. These are the modules that you will pursue in the design studios. Now, let me just say a little bit about the design studios. We, we refer to the design studios, not, not referring to the physical rooms. It's a bit confusing because we also call the room the studio. So we use the term studio for two different things. The studios, the design studios, are, is, it's a group of about 24 students. And that will be SAS students, MAD, MArch. It could be a mixture of different students. And within that design studio, there will be two members of staff. And each design studio has a specific theme that they pursue. And they pursue that through the whole year, semester one and semester two. And for SAS, there will either be, it's not quite decided yet, but there will either be two or three studios you can choose from. One of those studios I will run, uh, the other one will be run by some other, ver some other very good members of staff. So in the, in the design project module, that is where you are pursuing a design piece of work in, in that design studio. You will have tutorials every week, there will be reviews, um, there, there may be workshops, there will be field trips. It's a really exciting place to be because you're, you're working with other students from other courses. You get input from all sorts of members of staff. It, when you have a review of your project, the professors will be coming in the reviews. They'll be visiting architects. There'll be some really important people contributing to that. So really exciting. Um, there are two, two modules, one and two. One is delivered in the autumn semester, two is in spring, and your project will run through those. Um, you don't need to do anything about that at the moment. The, um, the studios don't start until week seven, and you'll, you'll get an opportunity to choose your studio in, I think it's week three or four, okay? So at the moment, don't worry about it. Nearer the time, 
all of the studio leaders will give a presentation about what their studio is about, and then you can choose which one you want to do. Okay. Thesis project um, Steve just covered. Um, just to explain here the, the design thesis project, um, this is a fairly new initiative for us. In the past, a thesis project was a written document. So it would be a sort of large, maybe 12,000 word written piece of work. What we've introduced now is that you can pursue a more design-based approach if you want. And if you pursue a more design-based approach, you, have, you will submit a portfolio with a much shorter, with a 4,000 word written text. And it allows students to pursue sustainable architectural ideas through a more design uh, approach rather than just a written. And it, and it seems to be quite a successful way. Um, we have a lot of expertise in the school in design-based research. Now, if you went back five years ago, most people would have considered research to be sort of written texts and experiments. But we're, we're kind of pioneering in this school that we see design can be research. And you, you may research ideas through design work. Okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's functional, even it's residential or commercial. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. It it may not be. It may be a a a specific design element. So, for example, I've I've got a student at the moment whose design thesis is on interactive shading devices. So he's not. He's not designing a whole building, but he's looking at diff the design of shading elements that, that adapt to weather conditions, and he's conducting analysis on the performance of that. Um, another, another student that I'm working with at the moment is looking at um, daylight optimization, and what that student is doing is they're using actually the, the, the Western Bank Library here as, as an example project, and then they're pursuing research themes through design and through making design alterations to that building. Okay, so you'll get more about that later. Okay, so we'll take a break there, and then we'll move into option modules. So if we could be back here at um, quarter past 11. Okay.